explaining to Mike um, before we started that it's as though I had two muses tonight. Generally, I'm in control for about the first 15 seconds when I start drawing or start painting. And then you have to become a good listener to the, to the work because it makes its own demands. And then at different points in the process, I may strike out and say, it was like what you were saying about antagonize each other a little bit, or, you know, um, and then the painting reacts, and then it, you know, it goes off in another direction, and then, so that, that um, but it does take, so tonight, you know, I had also to be listening to Mike, listening to the painting, and then on top of that, with visual art, um, especially with the improvisation I do, you know, I, I court kind of chaos and then try to bring it back a little bit, step back from the chaos so that people can perceive an order to it and an intelligence. And um, so in the end, tonight, I was hoping within the 10 minutes that I'd also, I would be able to accomplish that so that there, that maybe is a third kind of a criteria. So it, it seemed to work out. Yeah. <laughs> it, it was uh, the start of the conversation was a, a kind of a, a testing of the water as uh, we talked by each other for a few seconds and then the dialogue became clearer and I could feel 
what you were doing was reacting to what I was playing, and I know that what I was doing was reacting to what you were putting down. Yeah, I could sense that too. Uh, before this, you know, as I was worrying about this all week, I was, <laughs> I was thinking about, okay, you know, there, the dimensions of the art forms that we're using, and I was thinking, well, you know, there's the low notes and the high notes, and there's all of the textures and um, loud and soft, but I was thinking, okay, so if Mike's playing high notes, does that mean I have to be painting high on the, on the paper, or low is down here, and then I was thinking, but there's also, you know, the, the, the low notes are broader, you know, so it didn't matter, I've decided it didn't matter where I was working on the, on the canvas, it was more about the, the quality of the mark that I was making. And then there's also a difference in the pace. It, usually art, it's a slower, slower pace. So I can't catch all of what's going on on the piano. So then I realized I had to just sort of let it wash over me and, and react to parts and then kind of that whole sense of it. Then there's the added, like you say, in the, in the, in the time allotted, there's, we were both like talking about like working in the fourth dimension. Yeah, it's yeah. Right. Like there's, there's up and down and there's in and out or sideways, if you will, uh, in terms of texture at the piano, in terms of uh, timbre at the piano, in terms of pressure at the piano. Mm -hmm. And those things are clearly reflected in broad lines, darker lines. Right. And uh, whereas Roger works in visual jazz, I work in sonic architecture. So yeah, I was relieved to hear that because then we had as many dimensions. Then there's like the fifth dimension, which is the intuitive, probably. Indeed. You know. And <clears throat> nice chat too. Yeah. You had a question. I just wonder if you hear some colors. I don't have synesthesia. I don't experience that. So I have a friend that does, and I'm not sure how broad his palette is. But um, I know, I, I remember he was listening to choral music once and his impression was a blue field with, he called it red beats and it was sort of these bead shaped red marks in a blue field. So I, I don't have that, no. Um, I think different instruments for me sort of have a different, have a, I've never really painted, you know, like I, I have not painted Yardbird Suite or something, you know. Um, I'm inspired by it and motivated by jazz and I'm content to have my work be sort of parallel. And, um, you know, I don't have, I don't have that. And maybe it's sort of good, it'd be like perfect pitch, it could interfere, you know. I hear it's a real problem for people with it that have be. <laughs> so. uh, You know, the reverse, that, that is musicians reacting to paintings is, actually a historic fact and the pictures at an exhibition was specifically musical impressions of a gallery full of painting right. of an entire show right so this dialogue uh, may be new in this form but there is some history to it right and we're just I, I think we're just taking it to a, a newer place yeah i love the immediacy of it bob yes you talked about pitch and timbre and high notes and low notes. I understand that uh, one of the things that makes jazz jazz is creating moments of tension and then release. And I very much, watching Roger, perceived that happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they really, all of the words that you could use to describe music can be used to describe painting, really, or at least the kind of painting that I'm involved with. Um, it's It's... You know, for me, it's a delight because I do. I'm just such a music lover, jazz lover. Um, I get to live it kind of both. Feelings mutual. Yeah. Very, very good work. Yes. One of the things I think I observed was my use got a little more up tempo towards the end, which is when you went into circles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And I knew that we were in the home stretch. I'd signaled him that. Uh, <laughs> that, that um, I knew I was winding up, yeah. <laughs> so I, I was a little, uh, that was a moment of release. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, I wanted to tell you that you've inspired me, besides usually inspiring me, in that this summer, 11 of our grandkids are going to spend a week with us, and I'm going to bring some of that paper and some of your work and 
play it. Great. And 